Welcome again, Maxim here, and this is the first of the three videos that will show you how to deal with spy missions and go into detail about each spy room. I will start with the basics and tips that will make you feel more confident during it. The next two videos will cover basic Grenier and Corpus spy rooms, and the last one will be about unique tail sets, such as Kuva Fortress or Lua. The vast majority of spy vaults have two or three ways to retrieve data. Sometimes certain paths require you to take a specific approach, such as having some form of invisibility or using ciphers to hack faster. You can find cipher blueprints on the market or in the Tenno Lab in the dojo. Craft them and add to your gear wheel. To use one during hacking, press the Y button. Also, sometimes in one vault a certain path can be blocked, as they are procedurally generated. It may also depend on the enemy levels. And of course, room may change too when an alarm is triggered. The duration of alarm depends on the vault type. Sometimes you may panic because there will be so little time, and sometimes without the bigger problems, after triggering the alarm right on start, you will be able to recover data if knowing what to do. However, you can extend this time by using Lizard's Air Support. Thanks to it, you will pause the data destruction counter for a short while. Useful if every second is important. This trick can also come in handy when you fail to successfully hack the main data console. That action immediately activates the alarm, so you will be a bit more relaxed with a few more seconds to try to hack it second time. In addition, the alarm can also be triggered by a syndicate weapon, which generates an explosion after collecting enough affinity. On spy missions, affinity can be gained passively, if the team members are completing other points. The explosion itself is not much powerful, so it usually alerts enemies. It's best to not equip syndicate weapons there, or remember to change them when entering the room. There are also unwritten rules in this type of missions. Do not enter the data vault when another player is already in the room. The fewer people inside, the lesser chance of raising the alarms. But if you want to stay close, just wait in the front of the room, if there will be any need for additional help. When you play spy missions on Sortie or Archon Hunt, do not try to retrieve data from a given point if you are not sure of your skills, or if you are not extremely careful. Of course, everyone from time to time makes small mistakes. But in these two modes, failure in even one data vault immediately fail the entire mission. Skill up on regular variants of these missions, or proceed very carefully, using tricks and useful warframes. Speaking of warframes, the simplest help from a Warframe is invisibility. This can be used by Loki, Ivora, Octavia or Ash. It will protect you from the cameras and the patrolling units. If you want, you can easily eliminate regular enemies, but I recommend leaving regulators, the Greenier scanning drones, alone, if you are unsure of your equipment. If you can destroy them with one shot or strike, you are free to do so. Nothing will happen and your task will become easier. However, if you deal even a tiny bit of damage to them, but don't destroy them, regulators will start the alarms. Also, do not perform bullet jumps right next to them. Those jumps also generate a small portion of damage, so it's easy to raise the alarms by accident. In the data vaults, there are also various types of lasers, scanners or other energy barriers. They detect the presence of intruders, not their visibility. These can be bypassed with Wukong's Cloud, or Ivara's invisibility. If you add an argument to the skill, arguments are available from the basic syndicate's offerings. You can also use Limbo in the Rift mode, in which you can set him using the roll button. Scanners won't detect him. However, just as Wukong and Ivara, using the mentioned abilities, are also invisible to enemies' eyes and cameras, Limbo is not. Another option is to sneak with the operator. While in void mode, you can move freely in front of enemy's eyes, but you can't void dash through scanners and lasers without raising the alarms. Back to the warframes. Loki can place a decoy behind a scanner or laser, then switch places with it. Titania can dash while using razor wing, teleporting behind the scanner. Wisp can use her spectral image cast it in front of the barrier and take its place when it passes through. The spectral image does not raise alarms. And you can go with Nova and use Teleport. In addition, you can also put enemies asleep with, for instance, Baruch or Equinox, or take over cameras with Mirage. Alternatively, the brute force method remains, 
While Grenier scanners are not a problem, Corpus lasers can knock you over. If you want to run through such room without getting knocked down, you can use Rhinus Iron Skin, Neja's Halo or just Sure-Footed mod. But without any special preparation, you can avoid it also, just by rolling through the lasers. There is one more thing, Parazon. This blade is used for killing as well for hacking. It has three slots for mods, some of them can make hacking and spy missions very easy. Mod Intruder adds 8 seconds to hacking time. Livewire shock enemies within 20 meters while hacking. Firewall reduces the damage you take while hacking. Failsafe gives you a 50% chance of hacking retry when it should fail. Auto Breach has a 30% chance to automatically hack the console upon interacting with it. This also works on Sortie and Archon Hunt. End mod Untraceable. After successfully hacking the console, you become invisible for 15 seconds. I highly recommend the last two mods. Auto Breach can save the point if alarms are already triggered and Untraceable almost completely eliminates the need for Warframe with some form of invisibility. In most rooms, it's not hard to find another console to hack every 15 seconds. Now you see the list of all mods I mentioned, where to get them and what drop chances each one has. The Perspicacity skill can be an additional help. You will find it at Helmets after reaching third level of Metamorphosis. This skill works on sorties, Archon Hunt or Nightmare missions. Plus, if you have more companions, after building Oloro, you will have the Security Override skill. Thanks to it, your companion will be able to hack consoles himself. And that's all about Spy Missions basics and tips. In the next two videos, I will show you how to complete every data vault you come across, presenting many possibilities. If you have any questions or know other tricks to make Spy Mission easier, use the comment section down below or visit one of my streams, link in the description. See you next time, bye.